Hi everyone, this is Gad Saad for The Sad Truth. Uh, I've received a great number of fantastic questions this week from uh, viewers. Uh, many of the questions dealt with various aspects of evolutionary psychology, so I thought that it might be a good idea for this first episode to offer a primer of some foundational tenets of evolutionary psychology, and then in future shows we can address more specific uh, questions relating to evolutionary psychology. So fundamentally, the first tenet of evolutionary psychology is the recognition that the human mind is a product of the dual forces of natural and sexual selection. So in the same way that our other organs, whether it be our lungs, heart, kidneys, liver, pancreas, have evolved through an evolutionary process precisely because they solve some adaptive problem, well, the key organ that defines our personhood uh, didn't somehow magically arise out of thin air, but rather itself uh, is a product of evolution. So that itself is a non-controversial statement, it seems to me, because the those who are hostile to that premise would have to explain you know, where our human minds come from. Secondly, evolution psychologists argue that the human mind is an amalgamation or a collection of domain-specific computational systems, each of which uh, evolved to solve a specific adaptive problem, find a mate, avoid predators, find nutritious food, avoid poisonous foods, uh, invest in kin, build coalition and friendships. So each of these uh, evolutionarily important problems would, would necessitate uh, some adaptive solutions that are ultimately uh, encapsulated in our human minds. Uh, this is very much uh, well described by a metaphor called the Swiss Army Knife Metaphor. So if you think of the Swiss Army Knife, it is an amalgamation of different knives, each of which serves different function. And so this is precisely what we mean when we talk about the domain-specific view of the human mind. Secondly, evolutionary psychologists argue that the empty slate premise of the human mind, the tabula rasa premise, is incorrect. Uh, we are born with a set of biological blueprints uh, that are a representation of our phylogenetic history. So we're not born with empty minds only to be filled with socialization, but rather uh, we have some, for example, evolved preferences that manifest themselves uh, ontogenetically in the pre-socialization stage. In other words, uh, young babies, for example, when they are not yet capable of being socialized, will stare much longer at a beautiful face than at a somewhat less attractive face. Nobody's taught them that preference. It's an innate preference. Uh, thirdly, uh, evolutionary psychologists recognize the difference between proximate explanations and ultimate explanations. Proximate explanations explore the how and the what of a phenomenon. How does a phenomenon operate? What are the variables that affect the phenomenon? Much of science operates at the proximate level. There's nothing wrong with that. Most Nobel Prizes have been won at the, for work done at the proximate level. The ultimate explanation, which is very much within the purview of evolution psychology, answers the Darwinian why. Why would we have evolved a phenomenon to be of that form? Okay, so for, let me give you a concrete example because it'll maybe clarify. If you take pregnancy sickness, right? Women experience the unpleasant symptoms of pregnancy sickness in a, roughly the same ways around the world. And so a proximate explanation or exploration might be, uh, you know, how do the fluctuation, fluctuating hormonal levels of a pregnant woman affect the severity of her symptoms? Okay, that's a very viable and, and worthy proximate question to ask. The ultimate Darwinian why would ask the following, why have women evolved this physiological mechanism? And the answer turns out to be, you know, breathtakingly simple and elegant. Uh, there's a time period during gestation called organogenesis during the first trimester where the key organs of the fetus are forming. During that time period, it is particularly important that the mother not be exposed to food pathogens or teratogens because that can wreak havoc on the development of the organs of uh, the fetus. And so it is particularly important that she avoid pathogens uh, and, and develop some food preferences that could help her in case she is exposed to pathogens. So she gets nauseous, she throws up, she avoids foods that have high pathogenic load, uh, she's attracted to foods that serve 
as antimicrobial solutions. So for example, pickles uh, serve a, a very important antimicrobial function. And so once you put all these together, you start understanding that these pregnancy uh, symptoms, these pregnancy sickness symptoms, are very much an adaptive solution to a very important problem. Now you might say, okay, well that's great theoretically, but who cares practically? Well, think about what happens to a pregnant woman when she goes to see her, her OBGYN because she's fed up with her uh, pregnancy sickness symptoms. He or she will give her a pill that seeks to assuage those symptoms. Well, that's the perfectly incorrect thing to do because those symptoms are actually protective. Right? It turns out through other studies that a woman who experiences a lot of pregnancy sickness is less likely to have a miscarriage. She's more likely to have a healthy outcome of her gestation. So that mechanism is an adaptive mechanism. And by understanding the, uh, the complementarity of proximate and ultimate explanations, we have a better understanding of the phenomenon. So to summarize, evolutionary psychologists recognize that the human mind is a product of the dual forces of natural and sexual selection. They recognize that our minds are an amalgamation of domain-specific computational systems, each of which has evolved to solve a particular adaptive problem. They recognize that we are not born with empty minds only to be filled with socialization. And they recognize the importance of proximate and ultimate explanations. I hope I've given you a good feel of evolution psychology and I look forward to uh, catching you in a future episode. Ciao for now. Take care.